Hi, my name is Kyle Moran, and I am a junior in computer science, and here at Minds, I'm involved in cross-country and track. I study computer science because I love computers, and I enjoy creating something new. I welcome you to the CS at Minds Python video. Today, we are talking about shorthand notation and a few other general tips that you can use in Python. But first, there are several websites that show the funniest comments programmers have seen in source code. Google it. Some are pretty good. Here are two I found. Before we get into today's topic, here's a slide that reviews what we discussed in our last video. As a reminder, there are three ways you can call the range function. Notice that one way makes an assumption about the step value, and the other makes an assumption about the start and step value. These assumptions are convenient since start is often zero and step is often one. A good habit to use when you're coding is called incremental programming. Incremental programming occurs when you add a little bit of code, execute it, and then repeat for the entire time you're coding. In this way, you're testing just the little bit of code you've written. Incremental programming actually saves you time in the long run. Think about writing a large chunk of code and then trying to execute it. If you do this, it may not be clear where the issues are within your code. Incremental programming makes the whole debugging process way easier so we strongly encourage you to program incrementally. Up to this point, you've probably only been using one-line comments for your code, as shown at the top of this slide. If you need to explain a piece of code in greater detail, one-line comments can be inefficient. In this case, consider using a multi-line comment instead. Notice that you use three quotation marks to start and end a multi-line comment in Python, and you place the multi-line comment between them. Just don't forget to close the comment. If you forget this, then the rest of your code below the comment will be viewed as a comment by the interpreter. Multi-line comments are especially useful at the top of the program file, as programs should always include the coder's name and what the overall purpose of the code is. Both incremental programming and multi-line comments can be useful. Let's now learn about shorthand notation, which is also useful in programming. Thus far, you've been incrementing a variable by one, with, for example, i equals i plus 1. In shorthand notation, you can just write i plus equals 1. Shorthand notation saves you a few keystrokes each time you use it, which saves you a little bit of time. Also notice that shorthand notation isn't only limited to the number 1, as shown on the second half on this slide. Lastly, when Python interprets a shorthand command, it will do the operation first and then store the result in the variable. In addition, shorthand notation isn't only limited to addition. You can use the same shorthand notation with subtraction, multiplication, division, and exponentiation. Shorthand notation is convenient when coding, and using it makes your code look cleaner. It's now time to practice your new skill of shorthand notation. Please pause the video as you determine what the final value of i will be. We suggest you do your calculation on a piece of paper or with a calculator. Are you done? Did you get 81? If not, please pause the video again and see where your error occurred. Here's one more practice program with shorthand notation. Again, pause the video and execute this code on paper. Ready? Did you get 16? I hope so. But again, if not, pause the video again and see where your error occurred. Shorthand notation is often used in loops, as you often use counters in loops. We recommend you pause the video one more time and execute the code shown. We recommend you use a pencil and paper to keep track of I and counter, as you trace the loop on the slide by hand. We also suggest you write down what is printed along the way. After you've finished tracing, we recommend you type the code into a Python file, execute it, and check whether your paper answer is correct or not. We'll give you a second to pause the video so you can work through this practice problem. If what you wrote down on the paper does not match what your Python interpreter printed, and you are confused, please come to office hours. There are a lot of students available to support you. This concludes our video. You should now have a good understanding of using shorthand notation in Python, as well as some tips for multi-line comments and incremental programming. We encourage you to launch your Python interpreter and keep practicing. Thanks for tuning in. See you around campus.